Hi everyone! Uh, today's how to, I'm going to show you how to create a plain background in a portrait, but a plain background that's going to really help your subject matter pop from the page. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to me here on YouTube and also consider visiting me on Patreon where I have in-depth tutorials and lots more. And there's a girl here who wants to say hello. Come on then. Here's Brocky, my little video companion. She's down at the floor grumbling to get up and say hello. So here's Brocky. Enjoy the video. Sometimes I get given photo reference to work from and the background isn't always the best for a painting. Sometimes it's too busy, too distracting from the main subject. And often the best way to deal with that is to create a nice plain background that sets the subject off better. And that's what I had to do in this portrait in particular. There was quite a lot going on behind the baby boy. So I decided to just go for a complementary colour. They had a grey wall in their house as well. so. It matched in with all of their surroundings and the trick is to try and create a background that gives the impression of directional light. So rather than just going for plain grey all over the same tonal value, I've tried to create a gradient going from dark to light. And the trick is to figure out which direction the light is coming from in the portrait. So in the photograph of the little boy, the light is clearly coming from here. We've got the, all the highlights on this side of his face, all the shadows on this side, so it's very easy to distinguish which direction the light's coming from here. And the idea is to create a contrasting background to make each of those sides of the face really stand out. So if the light's coming from here, I've actually made the background behind the darkest side of the face lighter, and the background behind the lightest side of the face darker. And you can see the effect that has, it really uh, enhances the light effect. And if we're thinking about it really logically, if I were actually shining a torch this direction and the light is coming this way, it's more likely that it would shine on the background over here than over here because it's coming this direction. So it's a strange one because your instinct is often to do the complete opposite of this. But I'm going to also show you a few examples now, um, some Renaissance paintings, even through to the Impressionists who all use this idea. And like all rules, they're made to be broken sometimes, so this isn't a, a set in stone rule for every portrait with a plain background. You'll see many examples that uh, contradict this. But uh, as a general rule, when you really want your subject to pop from the page, this really works. So let's look at a few famous paintings. And to get us started, this is a pastel painting from 1771 by Jean-Baptiste Simeon Chardin. And I really love his work. And you'll see the direction of the light coming, just hitting this side of his face. And that's creating this lighter area in the background over here and the darker area over here. Perfect for setting off the white of his turban and then in contrast, setting off that dark side of his face against the background. So that's a really good clear example of using directional light. Next we have uh, John Singer Sargent. Couldn't talk about portraits without including some Sargents. And the use of the background color here is really subtle, but you can see the light coming from this direction, or probably from above this direction where it's the brightest highlight is on his forehead here. And if you follow that line down, you'll find where the brightest area is in the background too. And again, that really sets off the portrait. And it's another singer sergeant. And the same idea here. You can see the light coming from this side of the man. Creating that lightness over here and the darkness in the background. So it's a really popular technique used by a lot of portrait painters, and even Vincent van Gogh himself. Uh, even though you can't really say he does a plain background, it's uh, a bit more pointillism than plain, 
but you can see again the light source coming from here, creating that slightly lighter background on this side and a bit darker on this side. So those are a few of my favorite uh, famous examples, just showing you that rule in action. And here are a few of my own pieces of work then where I've used that idea. And this was a very blurry photograph that I worked from with a busy background. So I literally just added this plain background using our technique. And this one's really subtle. Just a very slight gradient from dark over to light on this side. But just enough to allow this area to contrast nicely and also this area which really makes the subject pop. And finally, this one, it's a little more subtle in this one. It was very difficult to tell what the direction of light really was in this painting. As you can see in the dog's eyes, the reflection of the window that he's sitting in front of. And the light really is hitting him head on, mostly. But there was a slight difference. You can see here, this is sort of where most of the light is hitting on this side. And I made the background here ever so slightly darker to allow for that. And then over here, I've allowed the background to be a bit lighter so that these nice dark areas show up well. So the rule isn't set in stone, but it's definitely a good one to bear in mind if you want to create a nice plain background, but something that's going to help the 3D quality of your subject. So thanks for watching and I hope you found this helpful. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to me here on YouTube and check me out on Patreon too. Until next time, from Brocky and me, happy pastling.